Well, today on WCR Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're going to talk about telling your customers what they need. You're the reason they buy or they get an upsell or any of that stuff. So if you have customers, which I hope you do, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up, y'all? What's up? I hope everything is going better for you. I hope uh, this whole corona baloney uh, is uh, not affecting you as much, uh, and you're getting back to work. But either way, if it's your first time here, have a look around. This is a weekly podcast that we do every single week. comes out on Friday as a uh, podcast and as a video on YouTube. YouTube's where the conversation is, but go check it out uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Hopefully it's awesome. Hopefully you want to listen. Hopefully you want to be one of the cool kids. And if you are already one of the cool kids, if you are one of the nation, if you're someone who uh, watches, listens, all that stuff, thumbs up the video on YouTube, comments, and most importantly, buys your supplies through me, huh? What's up? It is because of you that I get to buy brand name toothpaste and tooth whitening things and everything else that you guys recommend that I buy, apparently. But no, Uh, if you want to buy any supplies, I'd love to be your rep. I'd love to put every order you ever have in. It doesn't cost you any extra, but then I get credit for it. And that's how I make my cheddar. So if you want to do that, uh, show me a little love. Uh, It's 862-312. 2026 is my cell phone. Call, text me, whatever. Throw it all in your cart all night. Make sure you're logged in, though, so it saves. Text me and be like, yo, Jersey, it's all in my cart. Put the order in. And at the end of this show, I'll give you a code for 5% off also to help your order along even better. So first off, I want to say what's up to Justin Speed in Kalamazoo. What's up, man? Jonathan Richards, what's going on? Uh, And Joel Purvis. What's up? It's the Day of Jays there, I guess. Uh, I try to shout out people uh, that are just awesome, and those people are definitely, definitely awesome. Thank you, dudes, for being cool. Um, But yeah, so this week, we're going to be talking about telling your customers what they need. Not what they need to hear, because I don't like that, uh, but what they need. Let me give you a little background. You know that I'm in sales, and a lot of you, a lot of you, buy from me, which is awesome. Absolutely amazing, and I love the opportunity. I love that you're even letting me do that. But the thing is, is I don't sell, necessarily. What I do is I'll try to explain everything to you and have you make the best choice. Or, even better, explain everything to you and have you have the best questions. Now, if I say that there are two types of systems in pure water, there's a DI and a RODI, and your TDS is in a hard water area, it would be a lot more efficient to go the RODI way. I'm telling you what I think is best, but the option is still there. I'm giving you all the options. Now you would say, well, what does it cost if I did go the DI route, right? That's a great question. Now we're talking on that. We're explaining why the RODI is better. I'm not just telling you what you need to hear. But the big thing with customers, it's the same kind of concept. Is you don't necessarily ever, ever, ever want to sugarcoat something or lie. Lying, it ruins your integrity. Um, it's like if you kill someone uh, intentionally, you can never not be a murderer. It's the same thing with lying. I know that's really drastic jump there, but here's the thing. If you lie to a customer, you're always going to be a liar. You can't take that back, Right? Everybody knows, too, from people who have been in a relationship or something goes south and, say, someone cheats on you. Even if you get over that, they're still a cheater. They, they've nev- they can't untake it away. Same thing with lying. So I really, 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 really have a big thing about lying. Is there's, no way, there's no reason to lie. I would rather tell you the truth even if it's not good. Uh, people say, hey, what about this, you know, poll or... Uh, I'm looking at this other brand you guys don't sell. What do you think of it? Well, I'm going to tell you my thoughts on it, right? Sometimes they're not awesome. Like, oh, I just bought this poll. What do you think? I think it's a garbage poll because, and I'll tell you, that's the same thing when you're talking to your customers. There's, There's no reason to necessarily lie or tell them what you think they want to hear, but 
you do have to tell them what they need. And the big thing is with customers is they know that they need service. They may only be coming in for one, but you're the professional. You're the guy that they brought in or girl. Now, if you're walking around a house and you see clogged downspouts, if you see uh, dark shingles and moss and algae, you see siding dirty and everything, it is your job to bring it up to them. Now, there is something with this that everybody kind of has a bad feeling before they do it. Um, if you have ever been to a oil change place, every single time they change your oil, they walk up and go, well, your cabin filter is dirty. I would change that. Uh, no thanks. Okay, well, your 50,000 mile flush is coming up in 10,000 miles. Do you want to do that? No. Like there is a point of upselling, but there is a point of letting people know what actually needs to be done. Um, I very, very, very seldom, so seldom I've never, ever remembered it, that I've told somebody a service that like, hey, uh, FYI, I noticed your gutters are super clogged. There's some water coming down. Um, we do gutter cleaning. I can take care of those with you. Like people are like, oh, wow, thank you. No, I actually have my nephew coming over to do whatever the answer is. So putting out what they want or what they need is different. But it's our job to tell them all the services that they need. The big thing with that is you are upselling. Now, we talk about upselling all the time because it's so amazing. It's so absolutely amazingly epic that I think you need to upsell all the time. Now, I'm not talking about being a car salesman. I had somebody just the other day who sent me a message and said, you're always telling us to, to sell people and get all the dollars. You're trying to take their money and kind of went into this tirade and I said, no, no, no. I didn't say sell them things they don't need. I didn't say, you know, um, extort them or, or force them to buy things. That's not the point. It's the same thing if you ever buy from me again on that side. You know, I'll never like force you. Hey, what should I get on that? I love the deluxe upgrade kit. It's like brush and hose, a bunch of attachments. I love that kit. And I'll tell you about it every time you ask or if you're buying a water fed pole. But I'm going to tell you, you don't need it. There's a difference between need and want. There's a difference between need and want. You don't need it to clean windows, but you may want it down the road. And explaining that, I'm going to tell you the truth, and now it's your decision on what you want to do. There's nothing wrong with that as letting them know the options. Because the truth of the matter is, when you have a customer, no matter what kind of customer they are, say they're window cleaning, say they're pressure washer, whatever they come into you, if you do the other services, they're more than likely going to need the other services, right? They just are. Just throwing my phone over. But uh, if they come in for window cleaning, that means that if their siding is green, they're going to probably have somebody do the siding also because they clean the windows. Now, if you didn't tell them you did house washing and they ended up having to get the side, like, oh, man, it's so bad, but we just got the windows done. Oh, we're not going to do it. Like, you just didn't do them a, a, a service. Like, if I could let them know, hey, we also do pressure washing. We also do gutter clean. We also do whatever and help them with that. It actually helps them. This is telling them what they need. But the big thing is, is you can find out what they need, even not by sight. Maybe they have their house done once a year, even if it's not bad. Maybe they have their windows inside and outside done, or they're looking to have something done more regular. Oh man, I wish you could be here every week. <sighs> you know, like they say jokes like that. The big thing to do is listen. In sales in general, it's listening. You do not know what somebody needs until you listen. If you go to a house and it's giant and you got this bid and it comes out to $10,000 window cleaning bid, well, in your brain, you're going, oh my gosh, that's so much. That's too much money. Oh, it's just oh, so much money. If they got a big giant McMansion, money may not be their, their worry. The last guy who was there smelled. Or the last guy who was there stole from them or didn't show up when he said or rescheduled five times or whatever their issue is, you have to listen. You got one mouth and two ears. Why? You have to listen twice as much as you talk or you'll never hear what people are trying to say. Right? So I've had jobs where people have actually said one thing and other guys have sold on something that they thought. Here's the thing. If your uh, customer says to you, 
say you go into a place and they say, uh, yeah, so, you know, you're looking, here's the bid. Uh, you had your windows closed. Yeah, we had some guy come out uh, last year. He rescheduled like three times. Once was raining, once was going to rain. I didn't even, I don't even know that he finished a job when he finally came. I was just so happy to be done with it. If you go and go, oh, yeah, yeah, well, we're the cheapest around, you know, we're, uh, we're, I don't care about that. I literally don't care about that. I didn't talk about that. I'm talking about resp- I'm talking about showing up, right? I'm talking about uh, you know what I'm worried about. I'm the customer, right? If somebody says to you, um, the last guy came and uh, you know when he was here, I just I don't even know what I paid him for. You know, like he came, he, he was just done so fast, and there was streaks and smears all over and. When I was all done, I'm like, wow, I just blew $200, you know? Okay, there's two things that that person just said to me. They said that their quality was not good and their money wasn't good. That they didn't think they got what they needed for that. I would never then say, well, we're definitely, you know, the most popular guys in in town. You know, we're the biggest company. Neat. I, I don't I don't care about that. <laughs> what you should do is then sell on those bases and go, oh, man, yeah, that stinks. Well, with us, just remember... Uh, you're getting a seven-day rain guarantee. You're getting a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. You're getting all of your techs are all uh, they all have taken our certification classes. You can see right on there that we're all logo lettered, clean. Everything we do, we stand behind. Um, we're gonna do your track sales for. I'm selling them on the fact that their issue with the last guy was that they didn't do a good job and they don't know what they paid for. I'm gonna tell you what you're paying for. Why do you choose me? It's because of all this, right? So telling them, listening is telling them what they need. Sometimes people too will say something about one of the services and that's how you can upsell on the service. You have to listen. Listening is more important than talking in the sales side of it. People want to be told the options. Uh, As much as you are kind of against maybe pushing things or hawking services or being annoying or any of that, People want to be told their options. This is why a um, three-option plan works best. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, comment down below if you do three options, the three packages deal, or you don't. Responsive is amazing for that. By the way, Responsive is awesome. Um, Shoot me a message. I'll get you a discount code on that. But with that, do you do three, three options? And the reason is the three options is because it puts them into a second tier usually. But it gives them all their options. If you do house washing and you do roof cleaning and you do concrete cleaning, but they call you for windows and all you do is bid them on windows and that's it, how do you know they don't need all the rest of the stuff? They don't know that you even do it. Remember, I talk about that. I've done surveys. I've sent them out. I think we got to 10 different options of things that we did, everything from snow removal to whatever. We put everything out there. And I said, check off how many of these services you know we do. The average on all the service that we got back was three of the 10. And I, I let everyone know, I thought that I let everyone know everything we did, but people don't read. They don't pay attention. They don't focus. So letting them know on the job site, the options they have and the things they can do is not only beneficial for you. It's not only going to raise your ticket. It's going to help them. If I can help them, get their siding done and their concrete done. Maybe, they, oh, you know what? We have a graduation this summer. I'm glad you brought that up. I help them, right? No time ever have you done one of your luxury services, which we're a luxury company. If you've done a luxury service, window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, we're just cleaning things. That's a luxury. Nothing has to be clean. They can be totally gross and that's fine, Right? If you ever bring something up and somebody says yes, it's because it's a luxury and they wanted that. They wanted that. Nobody needs to have it in the residential world. So putting that all out there and letting them know, saying, hey, just so you know, before we start on those windows, uh, remember we do the house washing also, and I do that first so that we can get in and do the windows right afterwards. Everything's clean and nice. You know, Letting them know the options are best. That's where the three packages comes in. Excuse me. The the third package, the biggest package, has everything we offer. Roof cleaning, siding cleaning, window cleaning, inside, outside, track, sills, frames, concrete. Maybe they have a driveway, stoop, walkway. 
right? Everything. I didn't do wood. But you, if you do wood, put your deck in there. Put your deck and your deck restaining in there if you want. I want that thing to be $10,000 package. Do people take it? Not a lot. <laughs> but I want them to have the options. I want them to look at it and go, wow, there's so many things. Because more times than not, what I have is I do my little package is just exteriors. Simple. My middle package is where I want people to be. That's going to be inside, outside, and a house wash, we'll say. The big package is inside, outside, track, sills, frames, house wash, decks, everything, right? So you got $10,000, you got $300, and you got $100. Most people are going to be like, well, I don't, I don't want to just take the littlest one. Like, I kind of want the insides done, too. It pushes them into the second package. It helps them get the services bumped up. Bigger, better services, right? But the other thing is, is that I want them to look and go, wow, I didn't know you did all that stuff. It's giving them options. What happens is, is that people go, hey, so I see in the big package that the roof is there, but I don't need all the other stuff. Can I add a roof into the, oh yeah, absolutely. Adding that roof's $2.99 for the one side, $3.99, $5.99, $7.99, whatever your prices are. For that one side, we'll add it into the package. That's with the 10% off because you're adding services. Which, by the way, if you're too good to ever discount services, comment down below. I'd love to hear it. Um, but that's what it is, right? It's giving them the options, letting them pick and choose. And I always say it's like a menu. If I am doing bids, I could bid everything out, put it all out, and you pick the pieces. You go to a restaurant, you pick something off the appetizers. You pick something off of the main course, maybe a dessert, maybe a drink. right? You're all over in the menu picking different pieces that you want to the puzzle. And a lot of times you'll go to the restaurant, not get an appetizer, not get a dessert, not even get a drink, drinking water and having a cheeseburger, right? But it has the option. And that's really where it is. And it's all started too. If you ever remember uh, the upsell side of things was when McDonald's had started, uh, people would go in and buy burgers, right? Now, I just, I just had a cheeseburger. Things were different. People didn't eat, you know, uh, mass amounts like we do now. They go in and get a cheeseburger or whatever, maybe a cheeseburger and a shake, well, the thing with cheeseburger and the shake is that's great, but fries are one of the highest profit things a restaurant can have. Highest profit. So I said, every order, somebody orders it and doesn't get one, and go, hey, would you like fries with that? Right? Even to the point that that became cliche. But the, 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 the smart side of that is letting people know that fries were available. It was maybe something they didn't even think about. Maybe they glanced over it, they weren't paying attention, but now you put it in their head. Hey, would you like fries with that? Yeah, actually, go ahead and throw fries on that. It increased their average ticket price hugely, and it sold more of their high-end, high-profit items. And the big thing is, is that it made McDonald's fries as famous as they are. It's the same thing. When everything's done, somebody orders your window cleaning, or say they get a house wash, would you like a window cleaning with that? Well... Yeah, actually, you know, we try really hard when we do our house wash not to spot uh, windows, but the dirt has to go somewhere where we rinse them as best as we can, but sometimes they do become spotted. If we do a window cleaning, we only charge $99 for that. Um, we go through after everything's done, drip drying, clean those windows, and everything is sparkly and clean. Oh, yeah. Well, I just explained everything that happens. I gave them the option. Even if they say, no, I don't need a window cleaning. Okay, no problem. I'm already here for the pressure washing anyway. But you bring it up to them and now they can think and go, well, the option is I can either do it without a window cleaning or do it with a window cleaning. And he said that the windows would be all nice and sparkly. That is something I want. Yeah, I'll go with the window cleaning. Yeah, add that on. You just increase your ticket by 100 bucks. That easy. You added 15 minutes of work, maybe, setting everything up if you're water feeding. And you're cleaning windows, detailing, making it look better. And guess what? Not only are you making more money, you're offering them the services that they need or want, more or less. But the big thing is, is that when you're done, they're going to be more happy than they would if you didn't do the windows. Well, what do you mean? They spent a bunch of money. They're not worried about the money. They had you come to clean the house. They're worried about the house being clean. If you cleaned the siding and the windows were kind of scuzzy afterwards, say you did leave some spotting, some water spots, whatever, well, you already told them that that might happen. But now they're looking, oh, yeah, I came, but yeah, I just wasn't that happy. 
right? They knew what's going on. They know what's going on, but they see that and now they're not as happy. If everything's clean, they go, man, it's awesome. It looks so nice. They're not worried that they paid you more money. They're worried that the services got taken care of. It's something to think of. Another big thing that people sometimes forget is that you're the pro. I know we're all flying by the seat of our pants and uh, the big thing is, is if you're new in the industry, you look at the other guys and go, oh, those guys, those guys know what's up. They, they know everything. They're so pro. And those guys that you looked at are going, oh, man, this bid's coming up. I don't even know what to bid. I don't even know. I don't know how I'm going to get those windows. You know, I think I need a lift on site. Uh, man, I don't, I think maybe two days it'll take us. I don't. But those guys look at the bigger guys and go, oh, I wish I was like them. They just know, you know, they just have, they have their own lifts, you know, and the biggest guys are going, oh man, I don't know if we need to get a lift. Should we just send it anyway? Like, uh, but we need that on the other job. We want to plan on the same. Everybody is figuring this out as it goes. But here's the thing, no matter what, you're still the professional. You're still the reason they called you. It's the same thing as if you call a plumber or an electrician. If you say to your electrician, hey, uh, you think it'd be smart to uh, throw a couple more outlets in here? You, you think it'd be okay to run some uh, wire in uh, Roma or in uh, some conduit on the outside of this garage? You think that'd be okay? And the electrician goes, yeah, yeah, no, that's definitely not a problem. Or if the electrician's there and goes, hey, I'm put, doing your panel and I notice some of these wires are pretty frayed on the outside. I really like to... Uh, get those replaced for you if you want. Uh, that way there's no fire hazard. Oh, man, I didn't even know. I didn't even know that was there. Yeah, definitely. Let's do that. Right? Hey, I didn't, I didn't help but notice uh, when all these houses were built, you had one outlet in your garage. While I'm here, I could just throw another outlet on each wall if you want. Uh, you know, that way you're having more diverse power in the garage. It looks like you use a lot. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do Those are you bringing up options. The electrician isn't telling you that you have to do these things, but the professional just told you some things that he thinks is best to do. It's the same thing if you ask somebody, hey, I'd like to do this, and they go, you know, I just don't think that's a good idea. I'll give you an example. We had uh, gas put in for a stove. I like gas cooking on gas, not electric. We had electric. I wanted a gas light. Besides the fact that that is expensive to run, we were talking to the guy from the the power comp or the gas company, and he said there's two ways to run it. He says you can run it underground or you can run it on the wall, like or along the base of our house because we don't have basements here. I said, huh? Well, what about running it out of the attic on the wall outside and going straight down? He said, well, that is another option, but the problem with that is that your HOA more than likely won't approve it because now you have something on the exterior of your house that's not allowed in this neighborhood. We could hide it in a gutter, but then what happens is that you always have water running on that line and it will corrode faster, blah, 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 blah. Here he said, he said, yeah, it's an option, but in my professional opinion, it's not the best option. I wouldn't go that route. He said, it is, that is the cheapest option, but to do it, doing it right is going to last a lot longer. Okay. What about the base of the wall and underground? What's best? He goes, there's a lot more work involved in digging the trench. But that's your best case. You putting it on that base of the wall is just going to be, you're always going to see it. There's no way to hide on that base. And it's always exposed, so you have hot and cold no matter what. If you bury it, it's a lot different. right? He's explaining to me things that I don't know. I went with the buried version because of what he said. right? It's the same thing. When you ask a professional opinion or somebody says, well, what do you think? They're literally asking for your opinion. Don't ever be, uh, not ashamed, but scared to tell them that because you're new or you haven't been doing this very long or you're just not quite certain. Talk it out. Well, you know, we could get a lift in here. It's going to cost you a little bit more to have the lift, but what that'll do is make it a lot safer for us to get up there. Um, if we do it with a water fit pole and no lift because of that overhang, it's maybe not going to be a really good cleaning. We could certainly do it that way, but uh, on that window, I'm not going to tell you we can get it perfectly clean. Uh, we'll try our darndest. Th you know, letting them know the situation, then they could try If they go, well, try it without a lift. I want to go ahead and do it that way just to save some money. And it's not a window I look at, blah, blah, blah. You know, we've had a job like that that was a uh, commercial property. 
and um, that's what they chose to do. And uh, the next time we went around, we ended up getting left. The big thing was that they had the options. We talked it out. They knew what was going on, and they chose the options. I listened. That's the big one. It's just as big as shutting up. (laughs) I'm sorry that I just told all of you to just shut up and all, but a big thing that you do is people talk too much. And I know you've been sitting for 30 minutes listening to me babble. I know it's hypocrisy. I can't talk today. But the big thing is when you're selling or talking to somebody about the services, don't just keep babbling because they don't have time then to process and say something. A conversation works like this. You talk, the other person listens to what you say and then talks. While they're talking, you're listening and hearing what to say. Nothing more annoying than when you go and talk to somebody. Hey, man, what's going on, Jersey? Nice to meet you. I'm a window cleaner. Yeah, yeah, I'm in sock trades and uh, this is what I... You didn't hear anything I just said, did you? You're not even listening. You were waiting for me to stop talking so you could talk. That's a messed up conversation. You have to listen, right? So just being quiet allows them to talk. If you say, well, we have those three packages. The biggest package is the most expensive, but has everything. If you want to take something off that list and put it in the middle, that's totally fine too. But what package do you think you want to go with? That's weird, right? That that silence is weird. People feel silence. That's why people play music and everything. If I'm silent, it means you'll talk, right? So asking a question, being quiet, allows them to talk and allows what? You to listen. Because that's where you're getting more information from is you're listening. Well, I like that, uh, you know, I know our roof is pretty bad. We might have to get a new roof in a few years, so I don't know that I want to clean that. Um, But that uh, middle package actually does look pretty good. What did I just hear? I heard him talk about the roof. I heard him talking about a few years of the roof. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the roof looks pretty good from down here. If you did clean it, it would give you years of having a almost new looking roof. And if you're going to replace it in a few years, that, you know, $400 for the roof cleaning is a heck of a lot less than getting the roof cleaned. And it will last a lot longer to have it done. We're doing it the whole, all at the same time. Those black streaks, all that moss in the corner, it's all going to be gone when we're done. Well, now all of a sudden, he didn't ask about the roof. He talked about the middle one. But I heard what he said, and I'm answering what he said and what I heard. Ah, yeah, you know what? Actually, that does make a lot of sense. Let's let's do the roof because that way it'll hold me off until I need to get it replaced and we'll be able to see if the roof is really still in good shape. Awesome, we'll put it on there. He never asked about the roof. He didn't, he talked about it. I heard what he said. I responded in what I heard, not what was asked. That makes sense. It's a lot of like weird. Anyway, you get it, right? You need to tell people what they need because they're asking you. You're the professional. You need to upsell. The big thing is you're not pushy. You're not being an a-hole salesman. You're not going, hey, what can we do to get you in? That's not what you're doing. What you're doing is letting them know the options and they are able to make their own choices. But the biggest thing is you have to ask to book more. You have to ask more services. You need to add upsells. You need to let them know the other things because that's what they need. That's what they need. Nobody's calling you for windows and the rest of the house is all junk. They're going to have somebody else come out there. They're not going to be happy with everything when they look at it. Let them know. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. It's that kind of time, I guess. I'm sorry. Don't be scared to ask them what they want or what they need or tell them what they want or what they need so they can make the decision. Uh, All right. Well, thanks for watching or listening to my stuttering episode here. But thank you. Thank you very much. If you guys have any ideas for episodes of content, this one did come from somebody. um, I forgot your name. I'm sorry. But uh, let me know. Shoot me a text with show ideas. I love show ideas. Uh, my number is 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. You can call me, text me, whatever. If you want me to be your rep, I would love nothing more. If you ever thought, hey, this is kind of cool. I've gotten some information. Let me know that too. I I love when you guys tell me like, hey, I, I love the podcast. I hate the podcast, whatever. But I get a bunch of information. People tell me that daily I get something. Just random texts that just say, dude, 
I get something from your show. Thank you. Keep it up. Like That's awesome. Because I don't get to hear that if we're not talking. I'm just babbling and you're listening, right? So thank you for that. The biggest thing, if you ever thought you got something out of this, is feel free to let me put an order in for you. I'm telling you, it costs you nothing extra. I try to make it as easy and fast as possible. I love it. That's what I do all day long. My number is 862-312-2026. If you throw everything in your cart and you're logged in, you can text me. Be like, yo, Jersey, the order's in my cart. My address is 123. And use the card ending in 1234. All I say is, yeah, awesome, thank you. I go and pull everything up. Your total is $360. Is that good? Yep, yep, that's exactly what I saw, what I thought it was in there. Boom. Let me know the discount code. The discount code for this week is, um, man, I forgot what I was going to say it was going to be. I don't know. Tell me. There you go. It's going to be tell me is the code. If you tell me the words tell me uh, as the code, you're going to get a discount. I had a really cool code and forgot to write it down. It's tell me. <laughs> we wink these things. They're just off the cuff. Anyway, go let me put the order in. 862-312-2026. And most importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic. <laughs>